Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Sexual reproduction in plants. So we have already seen in uh, some of the previous slides that plants do reproduce asexually. There are many different ways by which plants reproduce asexually. That is naturally they do it by vegetative propagation with the help of their roots, stems as well as leaves. They, they are also made to reproduce artificially by different methods like cutting, layering and grafting. So here we will look at the sexual reproduction in plants. Now when I talk about sexual reproduction, we need, a, we need certain part of the flower which is specialized for reproduction. As I mentioned before also, it is not that any cell of the body can reproduce. There are certain specialized cells which have the capability to reproduce. So in plants, those specialized cells are present in which part of the flower? Which part of the plant? It is present in the flower. So we see that flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. So flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. So that means inside the flower we have the organ which produces the male gamete. Again inside the flower we have the organ which produces the female gamete. So now the question is, is both the male organs and the female organs, they are present in the same flower or they are present in different flowers. Now again based on that, flower a flower can be divided into two categories. A flower is said to be unisexual if either male or female reproductive part is present in it. Uni, the word uni itself means one. Uni means one. So unisexual means only one sex is present inside that flower. Either the male part is present or the female part is present. Now it is very obvious that if the male part is present, the male part will produce the male gamete. If the female part is present, so the female part will produce the female gamete. So both of them will not be present in the same flower. So that kind of flower is known as unisexual. Some of the examples of unisexual flowers are papaya and watermelon. So if you look at the pap no, papaya and watermelon, these are name of the fruits which we eat, right? Now if you look at a papaya plant, you will see that those plants actually have fruit is the result of that plant. But before the fruit, you get flowers like this. So these kind of flowers are seen in those trees. Now there are two types of flowers. One is a male flower, one is a female flower. So there are two different types of flower. So the male flower will contain only the male reproductive part. The female flower will contain only the female reproductive part. Right? So the, both of them will have different appearance. They do not look exactly the same. Similarly, if you look at the flowers of watermelon, here you can see. So see, these are the buds. They are, they are yet to become flower. So if you look at this one, this is the male flower and this is the female flower. So the female flower has an additional swollen structure. Right? So what are these structures that we will discuss in the next slides. But for now, you just understand that there are some flowers which are even though they are of the same plant, but they will carry either the male part or the female part. Both will not be present in the same flower. So such flowers are known as unisexual. On the other hand, a flower is said to be bisexual if both female and male reproductive parts are present in it. Then it is called bisexual. So examples of such plants would be china rose and mustard. China rose is something I think which is very common even in your houses. You can see that you have china rose plant in, our, in your house. So if you look at a china rose flower very closely, you will be able to see that it contains both the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part. That means in the same flower, the male gametes will be produced as well as the female gametes will be produced. So now before we try to understand how sexual reproduction takes place in plants, it is quite worthy to know what are the advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual mode in plants because in plants we have seen that plants reproduce asexually as well. So then 
now that plants can reproduce sexually also so are there any advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction or are there any advantages of asexual reproduction over the sexual mode so both of them has its own advantages and disadvantages so let us have a quick look when i'll talk about the asexual reproduction let us look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of asexual reproduction the first thing is it is easier and faster mode of reproduction very obvious that's because we saw that how in the different modes of asexual reproduction so many organisms were formed just at one go seedless plants can also be grown by vegetative propagation for example rose which do not give seeds so in that case if there is no seed we we cannot think of sexual reproduction because in sexual reproduction formation of seed is a part of sexual reproduction so in there are plants where there are no seeds so in the, those plants sexual reproduction cannot take place so they can also be grown by asexual mode desired traits can be preserved through generations what do we mean by desired traits because in asexual reproduction we know that the new organism or the new plant which will be formed that is going to be exactly identical to the parent so whatever plants we desire to have we can grow them asexually because we have the surety that the same plant will get formed so the desired traits can be preserved through generations new plants formed are genetically identical to the parents so the new plant will be exactly the same as the old plant now it has both advantage and disadvantage the disadvantage is that this it doesn't involve any variations and the advantage is that if you want an exactly similar plant you get it such plants are more prone to diseases when i say more prone to diseases why because if there is any disease or if there is uh, any issue with a parent plant since the same thing is getting replicated after asexual reproduction so that means the chances of diseases in all the next generations is going to be very high because the same kind of plants will get produced right now on the other hand when we talk about the sexual reproduction so this sexual mode is a relatively slower mode of reproduction as far as the multiplication rate is concerned but here genetic variations are seen which are extremely important in the long run these are less prone to diseases because in this case that there is a probability that means the child will have some characteristic of the parent as of the father some of the mother so we are not very sure that if one of the parent is diseased the child is definitely going to be diseased there are chances that it can be there are also chances that it cannot be right so these are some of the pros and cons of both sexual as well as asexual reproduction in plants thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again